Turn this on. Can everyone hear me? Hey, how was lunch? Did you get it? Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, before I begin, there's a few fails I have to announce. Um, I won't be covering NLTK and I won't be covering Tulip. Um, as these things go, when I proposed my talk, uh, that's what I was dabbling in, but it turns out I, I do not know enough to actually give a decent talk on it. So this talk will be aimed mainly at beginners. Um, so feel free to take a nap if it's a bit boring for you. Um, yeah. So that's me. Uh, I'm not a Python expert, but I do love Python. Um, so I'm a bit of an enthusiast, rather. I work for ThoughtWorks from Johannesburg office, and I grew up in Pretoria, the other capital. For the past few months, I've been working on a small part of the OpenStack project. Now, who here has uh, knows about OpenStack or has heard of OpenStack? Okay, that's quite a few. It's almost a third. Um, who here has worked with OpenStack or actually deployed one? Hoping, oh boy, there's people here. Have. Who here has actually contributed to OpenStack? So. Does what? Great. <laughs> it's a good start, yeah. Um, so for those of you who don't know, OpenStack is an open source implementation uh, for the cloud. What that essentially means is that it's a collection of services that talk to each other to, to provide virtualized instances of machines. So basically, if you wanted your own cloud, you could grab a few old machines, put OpenStack on it. Um, you know, if you have you know, a few machines with 64 cores and crazy um, hardware lying around, um, you can have your own cloud. This is what it looks like conceptually. Um, you have your identity service, which is your basically your auth, uh, authentication service, um, and that wrap, wraps around everything else. Um, so you have your block storage, which mounts up your um, basic uh, hard drives and volumes. Um, object storage, which is basically cache. Um, your images, your imaging service, where you store your Ubuntu or Cirrus images. Um, there's your compute, which does all the heavy lifting and networking. And on top of that, there's the dashboard, which is where your end user actually um, provisions uh, VMs. So that's what it looks like conceptually. Um, but this is actually what it looks like logically. So it's a pretty daunting um, looking thing with uh, multiple uh, little sub-projects in there. So, you know, for a beginner um, like me, it looks pretty intimidating. Even more so <laughs> um, when you consider it's got 1.6 million lines of code, over a thousand contributors, and it's still growing. But lucky for us, it's mostly written in Python. So what we were doing with OpenStack is that we're trying to make a testing framework for it. Um, so essentially, when you deploy an OpenStack uh, implementation, you want to know that everything's running as expected. Um, and the way to do that is to actually you know, test the APIs and the endpoints and make sure that they respond with expected values. Um, but we don't want it to be so difficult that uh, you need to know the implementation details of each and every um, OpenStack service or sub-project. So basically, we wanted to use a DSL um, that uh, where Python ob objects correspond to the JSON models um, that the requests return, and so that the test can focus on business logic rather than implementation. <coughs> so this is what a low-level test would sort of look like. Um, this isn't actual production code. Uh, this is actually just a little snippet I, I, to, to illustrate a point. Um, so low level, you'd probably look at the headers and the body and actually try and assert that, um, you, know, you know, test against strings or actually deserialize or serialize your JSON objects um, and test the fields that way. Um, and you'd have to know which endpoints to hit. But this is not what we're going for. We actually wanted to make a testing framework that allows you to do this. So there's two concepts here that's um, 
abstracts away some details. So there's an image client um, which knows about the endpoints and knows which headers to send and does the authentication um, so that when you're writing a test, you just have to instantiate it and um, call a method. Um, and there's the, the models which order marshal from JSON to um, Python, Python objects and you can just access them normally. <coughs> right. But we ran into some dev problems. Um, we didn't have a reliable environment to work with. Um, you know, as you can imagine, uh, spinning, up, spinning up like an open stack um, environment uh, with, a, with a provider could get quite expensive, every, especially if you're running like lots of tests against it. Um, we also found the API documentation was a bit outdated. Uh, some of the endpoints didn't return the expected, well, in the documentation, it um, said one thing, but the implementation um, did another thing. So there was really no way to, to guarantee if we're writing tests um, that we can use the documentation. Uh, and the framework was still pretty much being developed. There's a, there was a few upstream core developers, and every time we merged from upstream, um, it broke things. And yeah, so we needed to make a, a way, to have a way of finding out as soon as possible when an upstream merge broke our, um, our code. Okay, to get an environment up, there's, there's something called DevStack, which is a collection of uh, shell scripts that basically uh, allow you to, to stack up an OpenStack environment on a virtual machine or on you know, a, a single um, Ubuntu machine. A uh, problem with this is that it's, it's, what it essentially does is it um, just collects all the, pack, uh, all the repositories from, from the OpenStack <coughs> GitHub and configures everything and mocks, mocks certain services um, but not others. And there's, there's a few limitations to it as well. Uh, like for instance, you can only have two nodes um, up at, at the same time, I think. Um, so, what do we do? Uh, there's a few problems with that. Was that uh, you know we didn't know we couldn't trust the, the documentation. So you fire up IPython. Um, I'm sure everyone uses IPython here, so and everyone knows it. So I won't get too much into that. Um, but we also used requests, which is a great little, brilliant, brilliant little library that allows you to. Um, play with the HTTP pro protocol and just send and, and use requests um, and manipulate them interactively uh, with, with IPython. So, and it's just really damn usable. So that's how you use requests. Uh, just pip install it. Um, yeah, the API is extremely easy to use. You've got your get posts, and all your RESTful um, RESTful requests uh, directly from the requests module. And you can investigate the, you know, the, the status code, the headers, and the body. So that way, we actually manually um, send requests out to, to each endpoint and try to figure out what the responses would be. Um, now, some of the old school people would be thinking, so what? There's always call for that. I hope you don't use call still for anything, because um, yeah, it's not very cool. But we can now save HTTP responses for later. So that's just a basic, easy way of sending a request out. Um, we're expecting a, a JSON response. Um, we can still investigate if, if it is a JSON response. Just save it to a file, and uh, we're going to use it a bit later. Uh, another thing about OpenStack was that um, it doesn't use any sort of standard authentication. It used something called Keystone, and the Keystone project sort of implements its own way of handling tokens and um, what's it, uh, tenants and user management. So it has its own way of authenticating and it has its own way of provisioning tokens. Um, so in our framework, we had already implemented how to authenticate, um, and using IPython, we can just you know, import that framework and use the authentication client to um, get the access token. And that way, you can actually access all the services 
uh, without having to re-authenticate manually. Where is this going? Um, there's a little module that's really cool called HD Pretty. Um, I must add that it's based on Ruby's fake web. Um, and it allows you to mock HTTP responses. One of the cool things about this is that it plugs in directly to the socket module. And that means you can use any sort of HTTP library um, on top of it. And you can mock responses using it. So one of the things we couldn't figure out was, you know, we hadn't dug into the code so deeply to know what sort of HTTP libraries we, um, that the framework was initially using. So to be safe, we just uh, used HTTP pretty. Um, and also, we just didn't want to just mock objects. We want to get to a level of mocking requests so that we could do the, um, the same amount of, well, the, the exact same assertions and tests um, for our mocked requests. So that allows us to plug and play. Um, so with the JSON response that we saved previously, um, we can actually mock that up using HTTP pretty. And it even accepts uh, regular expressions. Um, so if you look at uh, the line of the HTTP, HTTP pretty register your eye, um, you can see that we sort of uh, mix in the regular expression and it can, it will send a response to, to any request that is sent to, uh, from your application um, to that URL. And it will return that response that we saved previously. It allows you to also mock status codes and yeah, so very little work is required to get this to work. Um, so then you can test as usual. So you can have your normal assertions um, and yeah, and it'll just work. Uh, one other cool thing about this is that you can just turn it on and off at will. So basically if you have an environment up and you wanna test against your environment, you can just, um, not give a, uh, okay, so we have a environment variable called ismark that we set whenever we want to mock and, and enable HTTP pretty. Um, if you don't want to uh, use mocks and test against the actual uh, stacked up environment, um, you can just disable the ismark um, environment variable. Running the tests, there's a PyTest. Uh, it's, you know, it's a really easy, simple uh, test runner. Um, there's no frills, no boilerplate, and it's pretty much a superset of um, doc tests, unit tests, and, no and nose tests. So it supports all of those testing formats and styles and um, works pretty well. So there's a, yeah, and it, it's also very Pythonic. Um, so this is what uh, PyTest does with just the simple assert statements. Uh, and that's how it, can you see that? It's how it, it's how it fail, uh, when, a, when a test fails, uh, that's how it looks. And um, it gives you a nice trace back for it. So using, using PyTest and HD Pretty, uh, we can get like really quick feedback for testing our testing framework. Um, uh, which gives a bit more in-depth detail than uh, just us using unit tests. And we can sort of figure out when something breaks um, when we merge from upstream. Uh, that's, that's it passing. Uh, you can also use it as a git hook. So before you pull and rebase, um, you can, it'll run and it'll tell you when, when a test is failing. Uh, so what was that all about? Uh, <laughs> using manual exploration of RESTful APIs with IPython and requests, um, it would be nice to automate it if you could actually uh, get a document with, with the actual endpoints and you can actually um, iterate through them, send the requests, save the responses uh, for later, and then mock them up um, afterwards. And also essentially testing a testing framework um, for development. Uh, that was a really short talk. Um, I'll be taking questions now. <laughs> Sorry, already.
Does anybody need questions for Seth? Well, I mean, most of the most of the service endpoints just uh, have a you know returns normal RESTful um, <coughs> responses. So, like, there really isn't much that you can't do with it, um, and, unless you mean with uh, HD Pretty. Um, well, XML <laughs> would be. As per usual, like would be really annoying, but um, no, I, I don't see, I don't, I don't see why it would have a problem. If it's if it's um, nice and restful, then it, it really shouldn't. Yeah. Anything else? Um, currently, it's not it's not being used. Uh, it's it's slated for release with hopefully not not the current um, OpenStack. What is it coming up? I think it's Grizzly, or is it Folsom? It's it's hopefully going to be in, in the one after the next release um, of OpenStack. So yeah. Cool. Um, Did it. We do have a fair amount of time. Um, I think uh, anyone want to volunteer for a lightning talk? I think that's good. <laughs> yeah, mine's. Yeah, I mean, I think this stuff's fantastic. I've certainly come up against trying to uh, mock and test HTTP backend services. Anyone in the service-oriented kind of situation, these tools are actually really fantastic. Um, so yeah, has anyone come up against this kind of stuff before? Doing testing against production HTTP services, and now you have to bring up five services and try to test them or just stub them and so on. So it's, it's really great work. Um, <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, yeah, talk amongst yourselves. Um, <laughs>